excited for this conversation, Bongani, because it seems like it's a close circle here, right? <laughs> With Candice. And I recall meeting you a few years back when it was the height of the focus on uh, natural hair care yes. and candy and co. Yes. But I also know that you and Bongani go back, like Jeez. way back. <laughs> like way, way back. Like we were... <laughs> we were, we were at, we were at uh, Pekininis in the corporate world at oh, Unilever. Really? I'd started the year before and uh, Candice came in the year after and mm -hmm. we were assistants on the deodorants category, mm -hmm. selling Shield on X. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So we go Durban. way back. So we go way far back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, she, so she's family. <laughs> so she's fam. She's fam. Am I allowed to touch you? Again? Oh, yeah. No, okay. you can. But we're all vaccinated. Oh, yeah, I am. I am. Jabs, Too sanitized. 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 Yeah. Sanitized. 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 So we're yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so I've been welcome, fam. Thank you. Uh, glad for you to be here. I think I'd said to Google that, you know, uh, as we're having these conversations about business while black is one person we need to have was to have you. Wow. Um, and, you. And, and why we want to talk to you is Secunda. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you've got this big term deracializing <laughs> black, deracializing your hair. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think it's more around just understanding your journey and, and especially as a woman, yeah. um, it's tough out here, um, uh, people always say the, the the next worst enemy from the white male is a black male, <laughs> right? Because we get we get in there. We'll we talk about, about it. Allow <laughs> us to tell <laughs> you about it, right? We, we get in there. We well, talk about mountain. We, 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 we talk about mountain biking, soccer, golf. a bit of rugby, golf, <laughs> and we sort it, right? And yeah. and, and and I think it's. It's harder for you guys. So thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, you want to, you want to, let, let's, sure, let's sure, pour sure. some wine I, and. Uh, I guess let's lovely. start with your glass. Or our guest, actually, Candice. So okay. let's start. Yeah, let's start. Yeah, okay. cool. Should we tell them the truth, though, Candice? About this wine. Yeah, she, so she didn't want to have wine. So, yeah, so I generally go on a 21 day detox just before summer because I do like good wine. Oh, but okay. I'm doing this for the family table. We're glad. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And Thank somebody you. said it's really good wine. So I'm like, wow. I mean, Thank I can't say no to really good wine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I just no. want to know when the entrepreneurship bug actually bit yeah. because one would think you lived it up yeah. uh, in a cushy job. <laughs> Right in corporate South Africa, yeah. but uh, to take that big step and big jump, surely something must yeah, have been conspiring yeah. Absolutely. in the world. Absolutely. I, I sometimes ask myself the question, like, how have I done it? Sure. And um, I'm very big on going back to like my childhood. And I think I was an entrepreneur from a very young age. I remember like doing paintings and studying it and like doing my grandmother's pedis. Surprisingly, I would do her feet. Yeah. So I think I always liked the idea of creating and selling from a very young age. But going to school, going to, like, if you don't come from an entrepreneurial family, yes. mm. you go the safe route where you go to school, you study science, you know, you take science, math, accounting, there's very particular careers you have to go into. Yeah. And so that's, I think, how you get into the corporate world. Mm. And I love the decision that I, that I made. Yeah. And um, I think, as Bongani said, I um, come from a mixed race family. I actually didn't grow up in the place called Sukunda because at the time we weren't allowed to live in those areas. Yeah. Um, oh. Sukunda, Kinros, and Evander, you had to be white. Wow. Emma Lentley was black, and then Indian and Colored lived in a place called Thistle Grove. Oh. But when I say oh. to people I grew up in a place, they're like, where is that? So I'm just like, I'm from Sukunda. <laughs> but actually, I mean, it was even tinier than Sukunda, whoa. maybe about 10,000 people. Wow. Um, and obviously, Sassel's there. So my dad and my mom, I mean, I can tell their stories for yeah, days sure. you know they fell from the south coast and they made it down and you know they stayed in a trailer park because they couldn't stay in these areas ah. and then obviously you know working in Cecil my both my parents had standard eight they did their degrees you know yes. so they worked so always coming from a very hard-working family sure. that wanted um you know mixed race my my, my, my dad's side it's in Glovo and Thurston my mom's side was Smith and I do yes. so always saying like you know so always family lunches hold on my <laughs> interesting for you guys it's right like a UN meeting I always say so we had like Indian colored mixed race black we don't know where the white family went to there was like a small part that sure. disappeared so um, you, 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 you are the A grade of mixed race <laughs> absolutely but you know at the time we know how you know part it was structured it was mm -hmm. always black Indian colored um, sorry sorry uh, white Indian colored black schools you know so as family, we always wanted to be Indian because that was the second yeah. best race. And I would sit there and be like, no, I'm not. I'm black. Like, if you're not white, I'm black. And sure, then, yeah. I'm also not colored. I'm mixed race. So yes. I, 
I hate the title, but at was the end of the day, we must own you, though, it. Because we often, often know that South Africans have a South Africanism of saying, so what are, are you? you? Number right? one thing I get asked, mm. I think at first they think I'm Indian, and then they start talking to me, and then I'm like, well, I'll tell my story. So, yeah, sure. And that's where the hair thing came up, is we had okay. such different hair types. Growing up in a small place, you couldn't go to a hair salon. Yeah. Uh, my mom has curly hair. You know, I've got straight hair. We'd walk in and they'd say, we well, can do your hair. We can't do your hair. Wow. Oh, sorry, you're not white. You can't come in. You can't get your nails done. So I think the race thing um, for us, I've experienced it from a very young age. You know, mm, yes. my parents invested in us. Like I did acrobatics. I had my essay colors in acrobatics. I did modern. Sure. We would go to concerts um, and, you know, we were maybe two or three, you know, girls that were of color. And they'd say, oh, shucks, you're not allowed to perform here because you're not white. Jeez. Or, um, we, you know, to get into the schools because my son is Thurston, they think I'm white and then we get there. Like, Sorry, we oh, can't oh, register you. Oh, yes. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, oh, oh, and you, 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 you know my brother quite well. Yes, so yes, 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 yes. You know, we went to an Indian primary school. They sent him home twice to say, go fetch your birth certificate because wow. you've got a colored surname, so you shouldn't be in this school. Oh, boy. My parents almost lost their house because, so, yeah, I can talk about race from a very I, I, young age. It's, 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 it's amazing how you, you, you never sort of find a person sort of your age yeah. who experienced apartheid First hand, right? yeah. because Absolutely. at that time, I'm assuming late '80s, early '90s was yes. it was a transition, right? So yes. Mandela is coming out. Yes, so every 94. so everybody's like, uh, people are starting to go to private schools, especially yes. places like Joburg. Joburg, yeah. But I mean, hearing your story yeah. coming from a small town, yeah, it's 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 real that you Absolutely. experienced it, yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting because when I moved, because I uh, did my degree at uh, University of Pretoria, then my honours at Wits, is that I think in the cities, because they sectionalized or segmented mm. so well, you didn't experience almost that, uh, mm. that, that what we experienced in a small town. So in a yes. small town, you're forced to mix. There's only so many schools. Yeah. There's only so many extramural activities. So sure. I've met people from Jeff, like, oh, I haven't really experienced it in my time. What world were you living <laughs> I'm in? I'm one of those. Yeah, though. exactly. I so mean, I'm like, yeah. what yeah. world were you living in? And um, But if anything, I'm not bitter to it. And I think that's where my passion comes from on when I say, say deracializing, I think your hair, your beauty, your confidence, for, yeah. that's where it starts. And hair's always been used mm. to segment beauty, you know, uh, what's beautiful, what's not, skin color, you know, mm. media's always been blonde, white, blue eyed. And so everybody kind of trickled down to understand that, right. you know. So, so I think that's always been such a big thing for me because my parents, you know, I also, other thing is like I was adopted in school because my mom had different hair. You know, so you what? Know, well, those rumors school. that people were spreading around. Well, you know, like nasty people would do that, and so it's just so I've always been this person of trying to drive equality yeah. and trying to understand self and love self, and because that's what my values were as a kid. My parents had to instill that in us to survive. Mm, yeah, to be like work hard, make a difference, impact people's lives, because that's who you are. You're not your race and you're not your gender. And it's funny you speak about yes. gender. And I always say when I walk into a room, I don't see color and I don't see gender. I'm yes. walking in as Candace. What am I here to do? Sure. Am I, you know, knowledgeable? But Candace. And I girl. go. <laughs> Let's tell the truth. I mean, anyone looking at you sees how gorgeous you are. Uh, and you know what I mean? And you take good care of yourself. Yeah. So I'm already, Bongani has this thing where when yeah. I first met him, I was like, thank you, sir. And he thought that there was a way of already compartmentalizing him and into a certain... Only, right? Right? I'm like, I'm like, dude, like, so, so is my dad. Yeah. You know, so I always say, yeah. Mr. Chinkanda is your dad. And sir, yeah. I'm a dad. I'm going to for now. And, she, exactly. and, and, and we're going to get there. Yeah. I think me right. and I are going to get there. Precise. And that's deliberate, right? Yeah. Because you often yeah. get into spaces where you work with men. And yes, yes they might respect you because of what you have between yeah. your ears. Yeah. But it's always like, hey, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> what you doing later tonight? <laughs> have you dealt with that? I think it's, I think it's, a, natural, it's a natural thing. I'm, ex I'm friendly. So um, you know, I'm always going to be friendly. Um, but I think I've just managed, I think, to to manage it in a weird way. Mm -hmm. I'm, I kind of understand my boundaries. It, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just say, I always say, like, hi, how are you doing? Pleased to meet you. Um, so I think there's, I just think that as soon as you feel like you're going into a place where you're less than, you automatically are going to mm. position yourself there. Mm. When you're going in, seeing yourself as, I have earned my right to be here, and yeah. I'm not going to use the stuff that are possibly there, you're automatically on the back foot, yeah? Sure. So yes, you absolutely see the boys' clubs and the golf clubs, and you're right, at first it used to be 
a very you know white driven business space now you see you know black mm. successful men doing it and i often say but why aren't girls come into your golf tournament you're having these weekends and they're like but it's for boys i'm like but you're doing the same thing you need right. to take us along and, the and, journey and, 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 <laughs> and, i mean i'll speak as a as a black male right yeah. it's 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 be, it becomes relatively easier because you walk in the room right so for example last week the box lost to australia <laughs> uh they're playing again this week you walk into a boardroom and there's Jan and John uh, and conversation whatever. starts you up. you like like what are Sia and the boys doing yeah, right yeah. and like come on man i mean i mountain bike yeah already there's guys we, let's go on a tour like a yeah. three day tour yeah. and and you don't realize it that you're leaving other people behind you are it's mm. true because what you're then doing is creating a new class a new ceiling yeah. that so I've broken it. I'm cool. I'm in. Mm. Yeah. And and you forget it. And 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 I think it's something that as black males we need to be very conscious of. Yeah. And I think it's some things are not going to change overnight. So I sure. don't think after this it's going to change. You're mm. still going to have your golf tours, you're still going to have your cycling tours. Yeah. So sometimes I mean one of my means was like, you know, when I started at this business, I saw that the younger white males that came in played golf Yeah. and that was an entry to playing golf with the senior guys. Yeah. So when he got in he was like I need to teach myself how to play golf. And yes. he said that was a strategic move for him because mm. that worked really well for him going forward in his career. So I kind of asked myself now okay what do, can stop you complaining do? that you're not being invited. Can you can you play because I come from a golfing family. Why aren't you playing golf? Oh, yes. Listen, you're also going to be invited to those things. So I think I'm never going to blame that. Yeah. So why don't we create our own female kind of organizations and then say Bongani whoever can you can you come with us join us for your as for our for mm. our <laughs> spa treatment and well so sometimes it's not going to change we know yes. it's not going to change sure. but like how do we make it work for us and then mm. how do you manipulate the situation right? i suppose yeah. to be part of those those groups yeah. you know and it's it's we sure. we have to lead it it's like candy and co people were like why has nobody done this i was like i don't know but i've done yeah. it people said it was impossible exactly. but i've done it so i think Yeah. I, I think I'm just like a very positive person and sure. always like how do I make it happen? So yeah. Like me. Yeah. And there's lots of challenges that come along the way, yeah. but we have to kind of be the leaders and have the foresight. Yeah. Mm. So I I mean I'm I'm going to say it the way that it is. Say it. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean you've got a wide I've, 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 I've always known you <laughs> as somebody who's got balls. <laughs> right? Like 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 I'll take it as from, a compliment. From, <laughs> no, and, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. I think you, 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 you came into Unilever, and we met there. Um, obviously, uh, your brother Norden yeah. um, had uh, had given you insights in yes. terms of the politics, how it's played. Yes, yes. But you came in with this. I was like, this kid. Has got this overly. I mean, it's my second year, and I'm trying to make a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, so she was and, quite tough, and like yeah, and she, she walks in, and she's like politicking, and 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 all this. I'm like, I'm like, shit, she's got balls. But anyway, you've remained consistent. Mm. I, I I was watching some of your interviews while I was doing research. I mean, like, who emails Ian? Mm. Uh, uh, Context, uh, by the way, Ian. Ian F- founder of Sobay Group. Yeah. I mean, one of the lo- six most successful yeah. franchise groups in South Africa exactly. and beyond. And exactly. Says, well, hey, yeah. And then she's time. like, she's like, you're sitting there. <laughs> I'm gonna tell this white cat. I'm a, I'm a mixed race woman in Sekunda <laughs> who's got balls. I'm sure you're telling yourself that. Right? You're typing away, and you're like, dude, I know how to solve white ha- uh, black hair. Yeah. And 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 a company i mean everybody knows the failure of unilever from a sansuk perspective yeah. it's not it's not a secret yeah you coming from a corporate that's failed with all the money that they had to penetrate this market mm. you're sending this guy an email to say you know what i'm going to partner with you to solve this thing yeah come on yeah. <laughs> like i always say the burden of a black man who's in love is is, is taking his woman <laughs> to salons in funny places oh my right goodness. i remember my wife out in, in, in durban would the, the, there was the days of jabu stone yes. Yes. and all, I, i would drive her there and like and initially he's like babe um let me drive you there drop you <laughs> off and i'll come fetch you because the car is not oh, safe, safe. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. like, it's like deep down it's a it's a burden of a black woman so you Absolutely. decide that no man i'm going to deracialize this whole thing mm. I, I'm an entrepreneur, yeah. and 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 I 
call myself the salesman. And mm -hmm. I, I always tell people, if you put me on a plane now to make a presentation to the CEO of Unilever in London, I'll go. Yeah. I, I want you to tell the family. <laughs> Don't just say I sent an email. <laughs> like it's there's a, a real story. Like, 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 yes, we got time. So tell okay. us, tell us, was the laptop half charged? <laughs> <laughs> we want the details. It's actually quite a cute story. Yes. Okay. So five years Unilever. Sure. Worked on the hair brand, fan folk included, global. Yes. Did lots of research, and I think that was a big aha moment to actually see the struggle and pain yeah. that was going on in the hair space. Yeah. Um, then moved to MTN. My ex boss uh, for World Cup, I was like, this is a once in a lifetime oh. opportunity. I'm um, going to move back to Joburg, worked on World Cup, got to work with like Kelly Rowland. It, like, it was amazing. And then I kind of watched politics in corporate. And I'm not saying this like I'll never go back to corporate. I think I love corporate and entrepreneurship. But I knew at that time I didn't want to become the GM and the this and the this and the CEO. I was like, I just want to do more. Yeah. I just want to change. But it, you know, when something's at the back of your mind, it's not like I went to write it down. And then I was a survey user, nails, and I was in Durban and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do my nails. So I go mm. into the website. I'm like, oh, they franchise. Let me check what this is all about. And you go through, I'm like, oh, I could do this as a side gig whilst I'm like, you know, and I drew Balls. this thing. Okay. <laughs> I literally drew this thing. I'm like, okay, I want to own five stores. My mom can write that, you know. Wow. And I fill in the franchise form. And so funny, the, the meeting I went to, Ian and his son actually ran that franchise meeting. And normally his, his COO used to run it. Yeah. And he came to me and he's like, oh my gosh, I've read your application. You, I think I was 27 at the time. And he's like, you're so young, but you've achieved, you've done so much, you know, because you obviously you need you speed up your, yeah. your, your work. And he presented and I was sitting there, I was like, no, we need a survey for black women. Boom. Like literally, I was like, it's impossible. <laughs> It's impossible that this amazing country, women have to go to weird places. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine their that hair's guy. been damaged, mm. hair lines. It's it's a painful experience. How can beauty and be it a takes painful half experience? Day, right? You can't make appointments. Yeah, no. It's not hygienic. There's no towels, and there's no it's no blame of anybody because South Africa's never had hair schools that understood Afro textured hair or exactly. curly textured hair. And I'll come back to my sure. definitions of hair. And I was just like, hell no, we can do this. We're 90% of the country. And then yeah. I sent him an email. I was like, uh, you know, this is what I need to do. And he's like, absolutely. Like, we 90% of the country. Like, why don't we have this? We don't know how. And that's what I love about Ian. He's not trying. He's like, I don't understand this industry. I know how to do. I mean, he got into beauty with from coming from Jetmart. Like, he sold that yeah. business, you know. And then he, he said, let's meet. And then I couldn't meet at work. And then I met in Jan. And I did. A business case like we do in Unilever and I present and they were like oh my gosh okay cool because it was a family business like they yeah. they were great but they didn't understand that you know business That's inside huge, so I, I did learn from Unilever's decks um, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure top five I'm, hair I'm, problems I'm, I'm, size I'm sure of market you, 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 you brought out that USB which everybody it wasn't a USB it was, a, it was oh written boy. down yeah, we yeah, you, you bring, you're like, there was okay. no USB on the family table there was no USB ah, okay, okay, cool. just saved up here okay <laughs> um, and yeah and that's how it started and then me thinking you could do it was like oh I'll do this on the side and still work at MTN I was very young and honestly I was earning an extremely good salary yeah. at that age you know telco and banks pay yes. um, and he's like sorry ma'am you're never going to do this as a side hustle you All need to be 1000% on in and yeah I had to make the decision I think we met in Jan and I resigned in September so I said let's build the model whilst I'm working so we'd meet Makes once sense. a month um, he has an amazing family. He's got a set of twins. You know, it was a really a family business, but they took me in like, you know, wow. and we went for it. It was obviously a, a partnership. So I put money in, they put money in. I, they had the majority shareholding. It wasn't about shareholding for me. It wasn't about arrogance. I just needed to make this thing happen. Yeah. I didn't understand stores. I don't know how to do a franchise agreement, how to do landlords. So I was like, wow. I know my skills. I know their skills. You know, let's do it. And yeah, so then... We built it and in September I resigned and moved into like I think yeah, half my salary. But the, the nice thing is that I also got a lot of guidance. Like if you're going to entrepreneurship, what are the things? And just like make sure you can pay yourself something. Mm -hmm. It's yes. very difficult to run a business. So 
put that, don't see your salary as a profit, see your salary as an expense. Mm -hmm. yes. And understand what you can live off. Mm -hmm. Ensure you have capex or capital. It doesn't need to be a lot, but you need marketing money. You need yeah. to be able mm. to say to the landlord, here's you know, my surety. Yep. And in the last one, you have to be a thousand percent in it. And honestly, right. I sit here now and like, you know, it's, it's, uh, I often say, like, shut, if I stayed in NTN, what would I be earning? Where would I be? So you have to be passionate about what you're going because when you do those comparisons of where I what I could be, I mean, it's completely a financial thing. Yeah, you kind of you know understand why you why you made that decision. And I wouldn't do it. Exactly, I, wouldn't, I, I find that so interesting it. because you naturally came from your own family, which yeah. you know, showed you that world and uh, yeah. allowed you to actually accept your multiculturalism yeah. and multi heritage. Yeah, and then moved to another family table yes. where these kind of conversations took Having, place, right? Yeah, with Ian Fern, and his similar family, values right? as well. Yeah, about business, about finance, and I think that's something that naturally we all know we yes. lack as uh, uh, black families Absolutely. in South Africa. Absolutely, yeah. Bungani are actually talking about it, even going into corporate, you know, and not everybody, but like as a white intern, your parents have probably sat in senior positions or, you know, being on board. So that mm. coaching you get from a young yeah. age is something we might have not gotten. So, you know, I do think my, you know, so my dad was in procurement and stuff, but he was working. He, he did keep, probably give me more skills than somebody whose parents didn't. So I was That's maybe nice, did yeah. get a bit more. So, and we were saying like the big job for us to do is that we can pass those skills on yeah. to the next generation because it does help in we were saying a powerpoint okay how do you engage in a meeting how mm. do you you know how do you design your career up, like you even said. showing up so there's definitely like a gap and number of years that we need to catch up with but i think working with a fur family i managed to understand that side of the business yeah. and understand you know and it was challenging like i know the story sounds very you know amazing but it was like there's lots of challenges during the journey that i went through as well yeah so, um but yeah so back in secunda your <laughs> mom grow. this will grow this will grow <laughs> your mom <laughs> goes to church or she yes, goes church, into uh, my, my daughter works at unilever oh she's moved to mtn yeah now, now she's, she's an entrepreneur <laughs> of some hair yeah how yeah. was that phone call mm. because our parents i mean Very my true. mom still doesn't understand what, what I you do, do? <laughs> up to this day god bless her soul she phones me she just says how is the job uh, mommy the job, the job is job. fine i'm paid i'm paid every month <laughs> okay is, are you still in business yes. yes and this is a woman who owns her own shop by the way but she still doesn't understand yeah. what i do because she worked hard to send you to varsity exactly. to work exactly <laughs> so so I, I remember she, she used to be very proud when i did go home on holiday yeah. unilever Oh, he was going with Nordox and he, now we right? do, you know, do you know Unilever? You know Unilever? Not the one in Malawi. He works at oh, wow. yes. in Deben. The main one. In the, the main, main thing. So how did that conversation go? It's interesting because with my... They, they were actually and, very and, and supportive. And you're going to work with a white man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My mom and my brother were actually quite supportive. My dad was... They were all supportive. My, my dad was like, are you sure? But I think they trust me and they trust my decisions and they trust that I wasn't going to do something that was possibly not sure. going to work. And listen, entrepreneurship, it could not work. But they were extremely supportive, but they did ask certain questions. And I think, I suppose partnering with the survey gave them a bit of yeah. comfort. Yeah. Okay. Where it wasn't like I was trying to do it on my own. And I was very clear to myself that I was not going to start a business on my own. So that oh. I made, that was very clear that I was not going to go on this journey on my own. And lots of them were like, oh, you could have done. I was like, guys, I wouldn't even have been 20% of the way if I had to do it on my own. How many salons have opened and closed? I w and I didn't want to own a salon. That's a valid point. I didn't want to own a salon. I wanted to create an industry change. I wanted to, re I still want to revolutionize the market. Aside from here, I want to create entrepreneurs. And that's why it's a franchise model. Mm. Yeah. We our biggest biggest budgets going to training, so you have to touch the stylist's hands before you even open the salon. Let's so. talk about that <laughs> because we went away. I yeah. mean, I've had my hair styled by many people, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think we all have documented how I mean the South African hair industry and even globally, globally. is a billion dollar industry. Yeah. You think about movies that were created by Chris. Um, um, yes, Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris yeah, Rock yeah. in terms of good hair yeah, yeah. and the story and the journey yes, about hair. But yes. help us understand that, that culture of understanding the value and the market yes. that exists when it comes to hair yes. grooming, specifically for yes, black yes, uh, yes, South yes. Africans. Yeah. And also how that then has to translate into the necessary skills Skill development. Set, because yeah. usually it's just, oh girl, can you braid my hair? Yes, sure. Yeah. Can you just try to relax my <laughs> hair? But, oops, I got burnt. Burnt, yeah. So, so again, uh, sorry. Whoa. Okay. Guys, Imagine I can't be over the conversation. I can't, I can't be drinking by myself. 
Okay, what let's, let's have here. a Shall we cheers? Here's to entrepreneurship yes, and only yes, home yes. <laughs> and telling them we're starting we, a new business. business. Yeah. <laughs> cheers. Yeah. I like nice. the numbers, Candice. Sorry, that's why I'm here. The numbers <laughs> the numbers are easy. We are 90% population, so the market's there. That's a simple one. So again, I say if I didn't study marketing, I suppose that I'd, I'd go into like psychology to really? understand people. I love understanding people. So, and insights and research. I never make decisions without doing that. So again, a part that has driven everything, and we find ourselves here because of that. There were no schools that taught anybody how to deal with afro textured hair so there's i'm going to do a quick science thing mm -hmm. so here's here all of us have the same hair it's made up of protein and moisture it depends okay Let i was about to say it. 4c yes so if, I, if all of us in this room okay some of you don't have hair, yeah so some pull your hair. beard <laughs> and we pull your hair out yeah and we take the hair strand and we put it on the table and we stretch it it looks exactly the same it's made up of the same things. Okay. The difference is when you let it go, there's different curl textures. Oh. That's the only difference with hair. There's not black hair, Indian hair. Yes, there's certain hair textures that will belong to a certain, certain race, race group. Yeah. Uh -huh. But hair is hair. Hair needs protein and it needs moisture. Uh -huh. The curlier your hair, the more moisture you need. Uh -huh. Okay. When you put chemicals on your hair, you need more protein. Guess uh -huh. what? You didn't need even all these big brands. We didn't make conditioners. We were selling relaxers and shampoos, but that's what the market wanted. It wasn't the glow. Because growing up, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the girl on the hair, on the relaxer box yes. for dark and lovely, that's what every black girl wanted. wanted to look like. Yeah. To the extent that you put a t shirt on your hair, <laughs> flicking it around, imagining it's a wig yes, yes. or good hair. And, and that's okay, but it's like, how do you get there? So mm. the education of hair was never about what does the hair type need? It's what it should you look like. You have hair type. Mm. And when I say deracialized hair, you don't put race. Race is, it's like, sorry, I'm going to use a bra analogy. When you go to buy bras, it's you don't bra. say I have Spanish <laughs> boobs. It, I always use it because it like but lands. So right. I don't have Indian boobs, colored boobs. I have boobs and there's a size. Oh. I have hair and there's a curl part. Oh. Right? Oh. <laughs> That's so, what it is. So the next, okay. So, uh, yeah, so, no, I'm not going to go home and say, no, don't. No. No, okay. No, it's I, for I, I yeah, let the body hair. I, 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 I let the body hair. Keep it to hair, Bongani. And it's, okay, no, okay. And a go quick ahead. one, like, so, 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 the curlier your hair, so your hair, your scalp releases natural oils. So when I have my hair straight, my hair becomes oily because your natural oils are working through your hair. Mm -hmm. When I curl my hair, it's not because the natural oils aren't, it's like a road, it's not working itself down. So the more afro textured your hair, the more dry it is because your natural oils aren't made. So that's why you need more Moisture conditioner. And conditioner. Ah. So the market didn't teach stylists this. So you never, so we would look at it. So the black hair market with the biggest things were relaxer. Do you know hair? And hair food. Wait, hair moisturizing lotion was basically lotion for your body. And hair food was petroleum jelly. They weren't good formulations. Oh, so, the, so, so your petroleum jelly sat on your scalp. Yeah. creating a block so then your scalp can't breathe and then that created scalp issues oh. your hair moisturizing lotion didn't go in your cuticle that's why your hair looks oily mm. now i mean there's lots of products you don't have a problem with products but that was it but the market didn't understand the hair type and didn't actually care to understand the hair type so we invested in when i say 80 percent of our budget went into our stylists and changing that mindset that's yes, you know i never did braids when i opened my first store i said I will not do braids because there's just so much damage. We need to learn the technique first. And I spent six hairline. months teaching stylists how to braid without pulling. I mean, the fact that girls say they can't sleep after braids is impossible. Oh, like, no, we've I mean, all been I there. Mean, but now, if you do your braids at Candy Co., 99.9% .9 of the time, because, you know, the human touch, so we do get it wrong sometimes, you sleep well. My friend, and she wasn't coming to Candy Co. for five years. And I saw, I was like, friend, you've got a bald spot here because you can't see it. What do you mean? And she's always got beautiful hair. So her stylist was just doing her weaves, but not caring about the hair. The horror. I, I said, Fred, you might just need to swap to Candy Co. And she started going, now she's got this full hair. Because my big thing was you need to look after your natural hair. Weave, braid, exactly. do whatever it is. But we, I call myself a gardener. I grow hair. You grow the, hair. The, I grow the, hair. The, the challenge of but dating a black woman <laughs> is when she says, I'm braiding on a Saturday. You know that... You're not seeing her for that day because <laughs> you drop her off at some spot and you're going to fetch her. You drop her off at 7.30 sometimes yeah. and you're going to fetch her before four if you're lucky. Before, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. And then there's a disaster, six <laughs> o'clock. And you're getting there, I remember, where, where I grew up, is you get there and they're using the candle and they're going yes, like this. Yeah. 
Go in the hair Which piece. is fine. And, That's and fine. It's the process. But my sisters, yeah. I remember when they used to do curls, it, it, has to, it had to burn. It had to. It had no, the, you know what the secret relax is? It was like, just to make sure that you get that extra ears. Yeah. You know, you're like, just how? To make sure Guys. It's but like, you know what, Bongani? I think it's because it's we don't realize how important it is. For women, I mean, yeah. your physical appearance and hair has always been glorified yeah. to be a great representation yes. of your beauty, beauty. right? Yeah. Or even social standing. Yeah. So, hence why we choose to invest so much and sacrifice so much to the point where your hairline goes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and just I, to I be think my beautiful. mindset, and I, can I tell you, I say I'm 5% of the way of changing that mindset, that it doesn't need to hurt, it's technique. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely. I think we're slowly learning that. Yeah, so relax, relax, it doesn't need to burn. Because if it's burn, so I say, if I say, oh, come try this nice lotion, and it burns, are you going to leave it on me? Oh, certainly not. Why are you leaving it on your scalp? Because I want my hair straight. Eh? It will still get straight without burning. Mm. Mm. Mindset. Um, you know, it's a mindset. mindset. We yeah. were kids. Can I tell you my favorite, favorite guests that come out between the ages of three and eight? They come because before COVID, we do passion fruit, we do wine, there's Wi-Fi, it's an experience. You're sitting down, you make an appointment, you're not there for 10 hours. And then the moms will say, you've traumatized my child. I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? No, you know, I couldn't drive to Candy Co. We went to the side salon and the kids walk in and say, I don't want to do my hair. I'd rather have ugly hair than, where's my passion fruit? Why wow. the towel's wet? Why is the roof? Almost gonna fall on no mommy, and I can't use my iPad. <laughs> so <laughs> look at you. So they are my future, my future clients because they they are like this is what I deserve. And when I see them with a big beautiful, I'm like oh my gosh, I want your hair. And they're like no, I'm like your throat is just beautiful. And they that's they're so proud of it. And we have women like it's changed, it has, but it's five to ten percent of the market. Wow. We think that this naturalista market is so big, mm. and. I don't care whether you blow drying, straightening, relaxing, as yep. long as you're looking after your hair. <laughs> exactly. So, so like, it's just how you blow dry your hair. You never like doing this, but yes. it's a technique. So you can take any hair type, sure. any hair type, no matter how tight your curl is and blow dry the hair without relax. It won't last. Yeah. It won't last because once but you put water back in your hair, we'll oh, go we back Oh, we know all about it. water and yeah. <laughs> Then your hair goes home. Home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's fine. We're rocking yeah. naturals. Braids are a big, a massive, massive, massive industry. Yes. And again, Bungani, it's just about understanding how to do it yes. in a way that's not going to hurt the hair. So yeah. before girls used to like want to like tight, yeah. tight your We say leave a millimeter of the hair, not too tight. And take it out six And knotless, in. right, is a new technique. Knotless is a new technique where you're not putting as much, uh, like, kind of strain on your hairline. But yeah, you, you I think you should try it. I will. When you have no, no, we can do a lace wig for you. You know, you do the glue. <laughs> the frontal. Oh, yes, you <laughs> do the frontal. I ain't doing that. <laughs> you're laughing. Actually, it's a big industry for Caucasian men. Really? Yeah. Really? I'll show you some YouTube videos where it's a, even like a black men in America, they do afros. Oh, and they wow. stick it on. I'll show you. Oh, blow your mind. Oh, this guy yeah. looks 60. Hold on. And then he puts it on and he looks 30. No, it's real. So it's a lace wig for men. Lace so, wig. So just say you had hair here. They put a glue and they create they create a wig of Afro yeah. textured hair. And they put it in and then they shave it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you. It's amazing. Is this picking up in South Africa though? Because we're going to look at that different Not as yet. Now. Not as yet. But I, I, I definitely uh, want to go I'll, there. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the club and like, yo, hey, man. <laughs> You got a wig on. <laughs> you will not, never be able to see it. Is it? I'll show it to you. Never. So, so, oh, so I, I, I think what I want to, the one thing that I want to touch on. So you, 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 you're describing all these techniques and what you're doing. I, I think for entrepreneurs on the family table, yeah. it has to do with customer experience. Absolutely. And, and this is very personal. I think, yeah. and, and you mean, there's, there's customer experience in terms of servicing your car, somebody doing your garden. Dentists. Uh, dentists. Doctors. You you are touching my hair. You 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 are you 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 either going to please me or you violated me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? How do you get that right? How how do you get? Because in the service industry, the ultimate customer experience yeah. is firstly is is a return customer. Yeah. But then is a recommendation. Absolutely. So so how how do you get that right from a candy and core perspective? Yeah. So I think it's. You know, we, we're also not getting it perfect. So sure. we would know with COVID, like lots of our stores are struggling. We, we're literally just trying to keep our doors open, keep, yes. you know, the, the businesses open. I think that's most businesses, but we've been able to kind of keep it there because we're a community and we have good relationships with our landlords sometimes, etc. But I think it goes down to training and investing in your people. So yeah. our number one goal, we call them citizens. We don't call them staff. They, yeah. you know, and we call our consumers guests. 
and we've just invested in them. So, yeah. you know, you we investing, we call it the culture of the business. So yeah. you first have to teach them, break, you know, breaking that whole idea that hair shouldn't be pulled. You need to smile. You need to not eat while you're doing hair. So that mm-hmm. kind of service, those simple things you need to teach us. And I love using analogies. Can I be, mm, go for it. <sighs> Has that been easy with the black business community specifically? In so, so you you have I would say eighty percent of them great, but I so we did a campaign for Women's Month called uh, the Pull Her Down Syndrome. Mm-hmm. So you do find, unfortunately, but not everyone, is that you do find that many um, of our fellow communities will want to bring a business down. So um, you know, I always say, guys, why are you going to Twitter and Facebook? You know me, mm-hmm. or go yes. to the owner and say, I didn't have a good experience. You're destroying our business by going to Twitter and Facebook. Like I would never do that. Like because yeah. we're trying to build businesses. So. I think once you get the experience right, people definitely come back. Yeah. Uh, but you learn as you go. So our investment is in citizens and we do consultations. So I say you coming into a surgery, consultation cards, ticketing, Wi-Fi. So I really mapped out before even getting to the hair, what do I want the experience to be? What would I want? What Makes would any sense. woman want? So yeah. the braids do take long. You sit there for three hours. So we're going to give you free Wi-Fi. Yes. We're going to offer you wine. We do champagne. You know, but it's also not going to be ridiculously expensive as 100%. well, you know. So, and appointments would be, and I ran quite a few focus groups, and they're like, that will never work in our, in our kind of <laughs> Just rock up. Industry. But I'm make sure that you first, up. and yeah. that you have a personal relationship like, with absolutely the Absolutely, people are going to keep to their appointments, because who wants to spend 10 hours in their hair? Yes. Them? And if, if those, if that consumer is going to dentists and doctors, and our guests love our, now they complain if we're 10 minutes late, right. and I'm like... I know where you used to go. You used to wait one hour, but it's fine. We are promising a service. Sure. We have to deliver. And we've yeah. got a thing. And this is Ian's big thing. And if you read his books of like, if you're not happy, you don't pay, which I completely agree with because we're supposed to give you a service. And yes. here's a cheap. He's spending mm. a thousand plus. Yes. You can't go there and have a bad experience. Yes. And so the stylist industry for a long time has been, well, where are you going to go? Mm. You just have to accept it. And come back. And I definitely think Candy Co. has changed that thinking in many other salons. Um, that are giving a better experience, that are doing appointments, not all yep. of them, but we're definitely putting pressure on the industry yes. to get that. And it's funny that I'll make one more thing. It's like there's also an element of cheap. So people are like, oh, I went to Sobe, you know, Dry Bar, I went to Candy Co. It's like, you know, to watch his 100 day and I go there for 50 rand. So ah. I always make the example and I say, guys, if you look at our trade industry, you are not respecting someone by forcing them to pay 50 rand to wash hair for an hour. Yes. You're happy to buy a 300 rand bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. You're happy to pay to eat, but this person standing on their feet and you're gonna pay 50 mm-hmm. rand. Yeah. So I'll acknowledge Sobe Men, yes. uh, yeah. Ben Mo, they did my hair. <laughs> and I remember going there for the, f- it was actually, my, 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 my youngest son hated other restaurants, yeah. he hated them. Yeah. Then we went to Sobe Men and they gave him juice. <laughs> Passion and, and, and the passion fruit yeah. and the cut his hair and he doesn't cry anymore yeah. but but i remember being you know you know sometimes you think ah oh, it's bongani is progressive and uh, and and i get there and i didn't book a, i didn't book an appointment i said whoever's gonna cut my hair and it's a woman i'm like what do you know about a cheese cop Ooh, right it's, it's it's very stereotypical because i'm it's like true. what do you know about a cheese cop winner but it's taking off hair <laughs> Right, and 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 I find that, uh, um, as people, we stereotype mm. um, um, other people. But that, that that was just a side comment. What what I wanted to get to uh, the things that I'm passionate about is entrepreneurial challenges and failure. Mm. Right. So I look at you, Candice, and I'm like, I win. You speak well. <laughs> you went to Unilever. You She's went got to good hair. you went to good hair. You went it's to no Victoria. Such a thing as good hair. I will you, walk off the set. There's no, no such a thing as good hair. <laughs> you went to you, you, you went to Pretoria, Vits, Unilever, NTN. You meet a white guy, and you create a brand. So you think it's <laughs> so easy, easy for her? You, you're privileged, man. I'm lucky. You 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 ain't on the streets. We <laughs> suffering on the streets. It's hard here. Like, yeah. like, like, what can you, like, what have, and, and I mean, if even, if, even if you don't have a catastrophic story, mm. but what are the things that you've learned about? I'm sure you have failed. Mm. The model has failed along the way. You've mm. had maybe a client calling and they shouting about it. Like, how have you dealt with failure? Yeah. You know? So it's interesting because I often get the thing is you're lucky. And I'm like, no, you know what is lucky? You create the luck. Yeah. And um, before I get to that, it's like, I'm a, I believe in visualizing what you want 
and it's not like it's this like energy thing. Yeah. If you're clear on what you want, sometimes you don't know what it is, but you're clear on where you want to go and what you want to do. I promise you, everything that's around you, you're like, oh, actually, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to connect to that. Yes. Or if you verbalize what you want to do, you never know who knows somebody that knows somebody. True. So I think visualization is a big part. So even if there's failure along the way, you're not you know, shaky. You're like, okay, that's that. Now, how do I move on to the next and on to the next? So like my, I tried to do IBMC, which is the, I didn't get accepted yes, the first time. Yes, the integrated time. I was uh, traumatized by it. I was like, oh course. my gosh, but guess what? That forced me to do my honors, yes. which I wouldn't have done. I would have come straight into uni leave. And yes. then I got it. So that was a big failure for me. During my honors, the lecturers hated me because I was like, are you from Victoria? What do you know? So it was such a tough year from a studying perspective. Yes. They were like, you're going to fail. This is that, you know, like there was that mm. kind of thing. Yeah. And I passed and I got in. But you just kind of, I believe, you know, through the hardships, there's such amazing lessons that come out of it. And you never see it in the moment. But when you look back, you're like, okay, I yeah. get why that happened. And then when it comes to entrepreneurship, there's a level of craziness you ha have to have. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. like, you're sitting there and you're like, I'm putting in 18 hours, but there's nothing coming into this bank account. Mm. There's like that person yeah. that's working four hours, eight to five, and getting and the, so the there's a level of craziness, anxiety. Am I doing the right thing? Have you're I done Insta, the right you're on thing? You're on Instagram and you're seeing your friends. You you know bonus season, right? Yeah. And you're like, I people are going to Mauritius <laughs> and living it up. And 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 there you are. Say, Candace is known to be a real city girl. Hey, she, <laughs> I'm she, a city girl. Yeah. yeah. No, but you I, live your I, life to the fullest. I am like. I live my life, but I'm, I'm very good with money. Like, I'm not, people look at me and think I'm this big spender, yeah. and I'm actually not. I can't remember the last time I walked into a place and bought shoes and clothes. I've just, like, acquired stuff. I give stuff away, and I keep pieces. Really? Oh. Nobody believes me. I love glass, sunglasses and bags. Yeah, I know that. that, 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 that <laughs> but on, guess on what? I'll goal. buy that once every two years, but it'll be an amazing bag. But I'm not like, do you know what I mean? So, yes. so I do spoil myself and I do believe that you have to make yourself happy to be good to other people. Yeah, sure. I'm definitely somebody that loves, I'm very sociable. I love being out. So I do live my life. And that I suppose is a small things. I might not be getting the big bonuses. Yeah. I've been able to fly business class, whatever yes. it is, but I make my life amazing. And it's tough. Like some days you don't want to get out of bed. Like last week Saturday, I was just like, oh, life. And I'm like, girl, you crazy. <laughs> Your ancestors had to deal with slavery and apartheid, and you complaining about this nonsense. Right? You yeah. complain, I'm like, get out of bed. And I said, I said to myself, so when you said bald, I'm like, I said, no, girl, some bald girl. You see, you see. So she's got them. She's got them. Like, get got yourself them. out of bed, get yourself out of the house, stop feeling sorry for yourself. And that's what I do. And it's tough, guys. We've, I don't think we've realized what's happened in the last two years. Mm. Business, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it's tough. So you have and to. And family. And family, yes. you know. Speaking of family, yeah. I, this is our family table. We will have food in future. <laughs> we need to. Uh, we've been to our dessert. Exactly. It's difficult to eat and talk, man. Shame. No, it will be. But mm -hmm. who's at your family table? Because I think it's quite interesting how we've gone full circle in yeah. terms of understanding your family yeah, dynamics, yeah, yeah. how you interacted with the first. But who's at your family table? Six people. <sighs> and, 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 and we can... They six people I must put at my table. Six people on your family table, it could be... It's six people that have shaped you. Yeah. yeah. Representing or that, different or that you want to shape you. And, and, you, and what conversation are you having? Definitely my immediate family. Okay. I think they have... I am because of them. Okay. And it's interesting because my dad was the breadwinner. But guess what? My mom started a school. Wow. Underprivileged kids. She ran it out of our garage. Wow. That's huge. And um, yeah. And she started in our garage and she would charge him 50 rand a month. And guess what? Her school's 30 years old. Wow. Um, with 150 kids. <laughs> Shout and out to and, 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 mom, and, right? and I'm sure if you tell her she's an entrepreneur, she will refuse. I, I never even used to see it in that way. And so some, I was like, but my mom did this. But yes. we just never saw it. 30 years. She would take kids that couldn't do business. business. You know, they couldn't speak English. And like now, the kids that have come out of a school, I probably will kick any private school. Wow. Kick them. Like, you must go to her graduations. They're like concerts <laughs> like you know and she's actually there now because she's planning her picnic she's planning her hair 150 kids in a very small town who didn't have a school so she Amazing. would definitely be at my table great uh, my dad definitely my dad grew up you know 
through extreme poverty, both of them as well, you know, going to bed, even though his dad was, he grew up with a black grandmother in Colombo, mm. so he was picked on. So mm. seeing where he came from, he could go in, he could have gone into drugs, alcoholism, like lots yeah. of their family members were mm. alcoholics, you know, when you're growing up in that space. So his stories are just, you could sit for days. He would be at my table, definitely my bro, my brother. Lord, awesome. He's crazy, he's legend. but legendary. <laughs> He loves, he loves all, his all, truth. All, all, <laughs> all, all out. All out. <laughs> all out. <laughs> can tell him about it. Sounds like he no, needs to be a guest here. No, to join. Norton, I actually think when he's back from, no, when he's back no, from Lagos, he should be sitting Norton Thurston, <laughs> he is that guy. Oh, he, really? He will, he, he, he's, he's, I've never met a guy who, from a young age, he believed he lived his truth. And, and he didn't care. So notes. I, I, I mean, I he agree. stressed my parents out, but you know. <laughs> but he's a hard worker, also very successful. We'll t- we'll tell the story when you leave outside yes. of this. But he literally lives his truth, and he's happy to stand up even more than me to call people out wow. quite aggressively and to fight. I think we fight for the underdog. So my, he'd definitely be there. Um, I think my godmother. Um, she's sixty. Never been married. No kids. Like when we think about independent, living your truth, she's been doing it. It's not something new to her. That's interesting. Can, can I stop yes. and ask something? <laughs> Why do we call strong black women independent? Ooh. I, I, it's just because, because I, and I've always said, um, even when you talk about empowerment, mm. black empowerment, women empowerment, youth empowerment, there is still that element of being given the power from or independent mm. from the man or from the other race. Mm-hmm. I think we need to change that. Why do we always have to add a label mm. instead of just saying... But let's be honest. I, 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 no, I, I think there is a reason, but I think mm, I we need to be change the conversation because why... So I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. Why should I get into a BE empowerment transaction yeah because what it's saying is that person that's allowing me to have the the honor of running the business is empowering me why can't i just have the power for myself mm-hmm. so so sorry you, you uh, no no you're right I back think, to your goal i think when i say independence or how i interpret it is that yes you independent in that if you look at the history it's like you needed to be married yes and your man looked up to you hundred so percent it's historical okay. as well. So, and let's be honest, our grannies probably ran the household. Like, True. I know both my grannies worked and the grandfathers didn't, but there was just a societal norm that is so deeply embedded in our brains yes. that man, men look after women. I and that's another topic because when we talk about it, we'll say. get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, when I say independent woman, I just mean that she stood on her own two sure. feet. She sure. worked, she looked after herself, she looked after my grandparents. Uh, so, she'd definitely be at my table. Okay. How much is that? Four. That's, That's four. four so we've got Norden, we've got Dad, we've mom, got the independent God aunt. God aunt, and we've got Mommy who runs a school. Yeah. Uh, so we've um, got two left. Yeah, so immediately again, I definitely have my nephew, Ethan, which you say you saw. Mm. I yeah. love. Oh, so I always say I'm going to be that 50-year-old up in the club because <laughs> <laughs> that's because wow. I like nice times. I love hanging out with young people because I feel my industry, like younger people are always driving trends. And yes. always understanding insight and always an early adopter. So, you have so to be in the as mix. a marketer, you need to understand what's happening there. So, so be in the mix. Be yeah. in the mix. And I watch and I learn and I listen. And I think the future of even boards is having younger people on. They might not hold the same yeah, kind yeah. of uh, power, or but they, we need them at uh, we need them at the table because yeah. they are in the TikTok world and are learning how to do apps and understanding mm. back ends of SEO. Mm. We are, we kind of there, but they're like, you know, you know, Minecraft. Like you see eight and nine year olds playing Minecraft. Right. I said, they're like, what? No, they're building apps, like yes. the game. So, so I think having a younger person at the table is always great to understand okay. where they're at. Um, I suppose the last person would be a very good friend of mine, Joel. Um, she's got three kids, separated, but a superstar, you know, yeah. and really? just her energy. She's the person I call when I'm waking up in the morning and crying in the shower. I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, girl, we got this. She'll yeah. drive to my house. Let's go for coffee. Like she's just, she's literally has carried me. Sure. And I carry Beautiful. her, you know. And nice. So I a think sisterhood. those would be, yeah. I, so my friends are my sisters. Like I. <laughs> that's a good family table. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's <laughs> a proper family table. Now. Yes. You didn't mention any, any men. 
or compare <laughs> well, no, to a <laughs> Okay, well, her brother. Many. Okay, Let's okay so, so away from family. Her kind of man. And companionship. I, I just want to go there. And maybe that ties into <laughs> yeah, the wait, wait, wait. woman thought, we, right? We, I mean, this is a, a big <laughs> so, 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 we'll Candace. We'll help you out. We'll yes, help so, Candace, I will. Uh, you know why? Since we're at the family table. Guys, isn't it I'll, time I'll, up? I mean, I feel like I'll say, an hour. I'll say, I'll say, I'll, 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 I'll use a guy term. You're, Rose you're, eyes. You're easy on the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't use that, by the way. It's not a great. But you say we family. Uh, we I, use it no, no, no. I, I mean, it's like he's talking about using the word. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm, eyes like easy on the eye. eye. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> okay, clearly, clearly. Clear, no, fine. I've been married 16 years. I guess I, I'm out of the game. Go That's longer game. than most, I'll tell you. I uh, would. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you must be careful because this might just turn on him. No, right? no, 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 no. My wife knows where I am. And she knows who I'm interviewing. So, yeah. So, no, we're not yeah. going to get away from it. We don't think no, that. Be nice. don't, but I guess, how. how no, bring it. I'm good. Candace. I'm ready. Let's your, do your this. Type of, your type of guy. Look at him as he sits. And your he's type doing of, something <laughs> half of all the single men out Your there. type of guy. Guys, you have like five hours to unpack this. I'm still figuring it out. Okay. My type of guy. So I was saying to Google, I was like, she looks so amazing. She's like, you know, the last time she interviewed me, Ooh. you know. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> I've been YouTube through a lot. <laughs> I've been through a lot. And she's like, um, yeah, I went through a divorce. I'm like, me too, boo. Congratulations. Yeah. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, congrats. You've chosen your happiness or you've chosen yeah. to do you. It's not tough. So here, 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 here. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's to, to, a very important and perspective and that we need to have. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I often say to don't people, think of it like, that way. You know, when you when, listen, there's you'd have lots been, of in different the eighties, you would have been very ashamed. Yeah, mm. I mean, we still are today, so it's a, it's a mindset. So I met my ex when I was twenty one. Yes. Amazing, I'll never disrespect him. With him for fifteen years, um, mm, it's the first wow. time I'm in an interview. I'm talking, so it's big family table. I've never spoken Ooh, about it before. Wow. Thank you, thank no, you. No, serious, it's big. <laughs> thank you, Candice. <laughs> it's extremely big, but it yeah. shows that it's my healing, and I said. It's, it's weird when I was going through it, I was like, there's going to be a moment because I'm doing these interviews often where I'm yes. going to talk about it. So thank you for making me feel comfortable. Sure. So oh, awesome. So, you know, then I got married. We were married for five years, but I will often say he was the love of my life. I loved him. We were amazing. So we weren't amazing anymore. Yeah. And I won't go into the details of it, no, you but, yeah, you know, I'm a fighter and all of that. But at some point, I chose happiness mm. for me and I chose respect for me. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's such a long journey and people have gone through it where you're like you can't see yourself not living in that house and doing it on your own and independent is because there was a dream even right? though i was yeah even though i was independent I, was, yes. I could look up the thought of leaving was so difficult how am i going to go find a house where am i going to live like all i've known is, is this, this guy. you know and even though as i said i was independent in the relationship it's a tough but again there's a tipping point with women and i often give advice to guys like, you know, guys would do that and that and that. As a woman, it's a slow burn, hey? Yes. And then we reach a tipping point. Oh and there's boy. nothing you can do to turn us around. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was going to there. quote that other guy who's, <laughs> who's on trial in, the, in New York. So I won't quote him. Please don't. Yeah, <laughs> oh, we'll leave wow. it at that. <laughs> Oh, no, exactly. leave it at that. But I think you raised such a valid point because you're quite right. Once you actually make that announcement that, look, I want to exit, it's been on the back of your mind for, for two months, or three years. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Months on end. Yeah. But I, does it kind of shape your view of success? Because so often it's always described as having that happy package, right? Yeah. The family, the man, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, children, yeah, the children, the dog. So I, I think I'm probably different as I've never been the white picket fence girl. I've always wanted to be the... You're the 50-year-old in the club Club girl. girl. I'm hey, telling you, I, in my crop top and my six pack. <laughs> And, um, and I think it's, but you do, you do judge much. I think the biggest conversation I have with myself is like, are you going to, you need to work towards that. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a fight you have in your head, right? Mm. So absolutely, there's stuff, you get married, there's a, there's a journey you want to take with your partner when it doesn't happen, yeah. there's lots that happen. And it's interesting, I was actually talking to, to Jill about it three, day, three days ago, and I said, it's so weird because... You, it happens and there's an adrenaline that gets into you and you just go. Like, people mm. didn't know what I was going through. Till today, people are like, oh, wow. I mean, I, I, I didn't know that was you know, Exactly. Nobody until, knows. Until, until family, yeah, told you. Renee, yeah. told me. You're like, I was what? like, what, Candace? <laughs> yeah. I mean, because when you look, when, with the, the thing about you, and uh, even, even back when we used to work together, and you... It's, it's the definition of happy-go-lucky, right? Yeah. You always seem confident. 
even now, yeah. you wouldn't think you're, you're facing anything. Yeah. And, 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 and I think you being vulnerable here, I yeah. mean, we, we don't want to go into the detail because yeah, yeah. you can share what you want to share, yeah. is, 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 is that everybody goes through stuff. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And, and it's okay. Mm. And, and I'm, I'm telling the story. Because I and it was it was you like you said it in your face drops. I'm like no, yes, girl, own it, right? Own it. But that's because you know? society still has but that I'm, sense I'm of shame. But I'm here, and the reason you. I'm talking about it, and it's men and women, because yes. it's not only women that feel shame, because men True. feel like failure. That's mm -hmm. a big thing, and men yeah. go through it. So I think, and again, I'll sit here and say, I loved it till it wasn't good enough anymore. And sure. yes, there's forever, but it's also okay when there's not forever. Yeah. And we need to be comfortable to say. Maybe you're not supposed to be with somebody forever. And I said I fought, like the last year or two, we fought for it until it was just, I'm out, you know. And there's an adrenaline that gets into, and I'm like, I'm on my own now. Sure. And when I had my family, when I moved out, I didn't even move into my family. Like I said, I need to do this on my own. Wow. Going yeah. to work. And I said, I'm like, how did I do it? Like when I look back, I'm like, shucks. But again, once you make your mind up as a woman, sure, it's difficult to turn it around. I mean, I moved into a fenced place. I was living... You know, for the first week when I moved out, I was sleeping on her couch and then I was in her room. And I could have got, I could have gotten the place, but it was just like this shock of what I did. Mm. Yeah. And I found the place and I went through it. Nobody knew what was going on until, except my close circle. Yeah. And it's okay. And I'm so, yeah. I sit here so proud of it. I sit here being like, and I say oh, to people, man. please don't feel yeah, sorry yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to make I you finish that part. I know, right, David? I said, please don't feel sorry for you me. Have you have to drink. You have to drink. Otherwise, otherwise. Maybe hey. in the back there. Um, and listen, I, both of us were not perfect in the relationship, but that's relationships. Yes. And um, it's just you have to just understand you're doing it for the right reasons. And mm. I also didn't jump into like another relationship, serious relationship. I've done, yes, I've like been with, you know, guys and dated and all of that. But I knew in my head that I didn't want to get into a serious relationship. And sure. everybody I met, I was like, I don't want a relationship. And it was very tough for guys to hear that. Of course. <laughs> And they were I mean, rejected by you. I mean, were, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, this is Candice, the no, hair, the I hair person, like that. Candy like, and Cole. I was know? just like, they loved it in the beginning and so it wasn't good anymore. Um, <laughs> hey, but guys. I just needed to, to trust again yeah. and to understand yeah. what I want and to heal. And I do think, and I know I'm being, I'm kind of grouping people like guys mm, family moving table. To, guys moving so so my ex moved into a relationship so quickly and I was like how are you even doing that like that just doesn't make sense to me but anyway that's your journey yes. mm. but you do find that guys move into a relationship to deal with the hurt because yes. whereas women we take time you, sure. you sound like you're very self-aware, which yeah. is also something that I learned in my journey yes, yes, um, yes. following the separation yes, and divorce. Yes, and that's, yes. I, I, th I think, something that's so powerful and critical because it influences all the other spaces yes, of your yes. life and yeah. the decisions that you take yeah. to go back to actually say, hold on, what does Google want? want. What does Candace want? How am yeah. I going to get there? Yeah. Are these elements helping to influence yeah. and shape that? And mm. if not, well, a decision needs to and be made. Am I going to be unhappy for the rest of my life? <laughs> oh, like, no. I, my life is stressful. I need the energy I need for this business. I can't also be in a home environment that is unhappy mm. or is not feeding me. And, 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 you know, and you know what, right? I, I think it's a generational thing mm -hmm. and, and we, need, we need, I mean, I've got kids and you guys don't, but I, I, I think it's important um, to, to, we've got adopted kids. Yeah, you've got uh, an, um, your, your, your brother's child. Yeah. And my ex um, had a son, so I was a mother. Yeah, you, you exactly. Oh, wow. mm. and, and and what's important, I think, is is teaching the next generation of the family table of of defining happiness for themselves. Yeah. Mm. Um, I always use the example, not to f feel left out, is 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 is. is is <laughs> look at you it's so no. nice being in a place where we're the majority no, right uh, guys are changing exactly <laughs> not to feel left out in this in this deep moment with your spanish boobs yeah uh, you, you, you know <laughs> with my spanish, spanish boobs, boobs. <laughs> my spanish boobs. Um, rewind yeah. this interview you'll find out what we're talking about um, yeah. is is that as a black male we were talking about earlier on about males and being defined and and this the one thing that i always found difficult was the fact that my wife wasn't keen on caring. She loved me, she loves me, but she wasn't gonna, she didn't want my surname. Mm. Mm. I didn't take my husband's And I'm like, oh, boom. Mm -hmm. Woman with balls, see, I compromise. And my first one is such a nice surname. And and my son, yeah. the younger one, is a cheeky one, that one. Yeah. 
he says, I don't understand why women have to change surnames, I right? Know, that, and just and when, it, when, it, when you think right? about, when you think about it, it doesn't, it doesn't affect how we go on holiday. It doesn't affect how we're raising our kids. It doesn't affect how we spend time together and laugh. It doesn't affect anything. But for a long time, it, it bothered me. No, it did as a man. Mm -hmm. Because, because mm -hmm. when you, you, because well. you yeah. go home, it's like, hey, you're not leading there, when. Mm. Yeah, what's happening? You know, what's happening? Why, why, why are you not putting her in line? Yeah. And then you like, <laughs> and then, and then you, you leave there pumped. Go home. <laughs> Like, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no line here. And then the conversation goes <laughs> down, yeah. okay? And you're like, the muscles like, go down. Like, <laughs> and, 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 and one thing that I've, 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 I've sort of learned about marriage, and we've, uh, marriage, every marriage has got its challenges, is that every relationship has got challenges, is, is you define what it means to you. Mm -hmm. you and if it doesn't way. mean anything to you anymore, you move on. Move on. Yeah. And, 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 and let move, it go. Let it go. Uh, and I think there's a generation that uh, I totally you have to fight for everything business, uh, marriage, yeah. family, whatever. But then it gets to a point where you're like, if it's not giving you happiness anymore, call it. Yeah. So, I mean, ladies, kudos to you. <laughs> Thank Choose you. happiness. And Choose again, happiness. And again. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm giving you permission to be happy. No, no. You know, people <laughs> might judge no, 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 who's no, this no, guy, no. <laughs> but I'm just saying, and all I'm being clear, you know. Some people be like, hey, this then guy. But, I'm, but I'm, I'm just saying that <laughs> right. I think from a male perspective, it's, 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 it's so good to... Uh, males, we the, we the worst judges, right? We look at you young, divorced. I think yeah, you, just, you, 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 know, you, you well, just got vaccinated labeled. recently, so <laughs> your age, you know? And, and, and you're like... And, you're like, you're like and, and we drive the labeling. Mm -hmm. And it, we shouldn't do that. We should accept people for who they are. Women label as well. I find myself labeling people that are, I've done this, it's just, it's, I promise you there's a judge, there's, I promise you there's like this yeah. thing in our head that just makes us judge, we cool. can't help ourselves. To make ourselves feel better about better, ourselves, yeah? I think. But I will say this as well, like I also don't, I don't, I think in relationships you also should fight, so I think sometimes people make walking away and easy, oh, I'm just going to leave, sure. so I will also say that I think, you know, it wasn't easy, but you fight, you go to therapy, you, you know, you, you take it till the end because when you decide to leave, yes. you're so sure that you put everything into it that there's no going back. If you make that decision too soon, then it's like you're a yo-yo and you're not like, sure. And you're right, life, people, and the thing about, I think, meeting somebody when you're really young, you change. Like what I was at you. 21, at 31, at 41, you change Completely changes. So either we're going to change liking each other, we're going to change not liking each other, or what we want is different. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, my parents have been married for 43 years. Beautiful. Um, but sure, like, yeah. It was t like, my mom says, you know, so my parents it's not, have been... It's not like easy, it's been easy going. But she was like, my child, do what you need to do. Uh, so and and, and, and I, I might be, guys might think I'm selling out, guy called. I really think sometimes as men, we just lose it. Eh? Like, I think there's a... Say it a little louder for the back. <laughs> for the choir. I think sometimes as men, <laughs> um, I, I really believe that s there's, a, there's a male, black male conversation that needs to get had, that is never had. Mm. Because we always deal with the root Mm. We'd always do, we'd deal with the fruit the and truth. not the root. Mm. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff that black males go through. Um, and we bring it on. We want you to be our mother, our friend, our cheerleader, uh, our psychologist. And by the way, you need to cook every night before I get home. And I and sometimes I ask myself, I mean, I cook. And my wife is an executive. And, and there's a day I was like, we both executives. Why would I, and I was just sitting, I was like, why would I expect? We've both had hectic days. Mm. We've been fighting in meetings and what, what. Mm. Why would I expect another human being mm. yeah. to come at half past five and by 7.30, it it's, a, it's, it's a flipping full on and wait. She needs to do the dishes. Oh, no. I mean, like, in what world? No, no, exactly, and and and, 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 and I think they, they those conversations that need to be had. I, I'm I'm not saying that I don't like the fact that on Sundays my wife makes a, cooks up a storm for us as a family, sure. or sometimes I bry because 
you want the person that loves you to do something for you and vice yeah. versa. And it's great but when you're both exercising your choices as to what it is you want to do for each other. Exactly. And the family unit, right? Uh, which is, which uh, is where uh, I hear you uh, going. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And, and I think that's why I'm saying, I think as, as black males, there's, there needs to be... Are you guys that. ready for that? A men's I conference? I think it's a male conversation, though. Yo, yeah. oh, men's guys, conference. Your yeah, men's conference. But I, can I be honest? I yeah. also have to give some men kudos because I think it is changing. Like, yes. I, my ex and current, like, I'm very upfront, like, not for, I'm not like, okay, I won't do stuff, so but I'm not someone. a super cleaner person, like, my house is in order, there's always food, but I don't need to physically be there doing it, and I can do it, I come from I mean, there's Mr. Delivery. It's Uber Eats, you know, but the point is that you, you go into a relationship saying, this is what I want, and this is what I'm happy, some women are happy to do it, so let them do it, some women yes. need it, you know, so I think I've also seen men step up, where they're in relationships, where they have the same thoughts, they're amazing dads, I'm seeing dads that are taking the role of being good dad. So I think it's also unfair to box it. 100%. Know? And I'm, I'm, ju I'm just saying you're right that yes. the conversation needs to be had there and the conversation needs to be had with women where we say, you know, we want X, but do we actually want it? What's that balance? And when you ask what True. do I want in a guy, I'm finding myself being, okay, I know I can look after myself, but I've always done it. Maybe I do want someone to look after me. So do you? You know, so, so I don't do know. You? I think I do. When I say look after, it's like, okay. My dad The guy who goes to Buddha's well, No, it's like the, my dad provided... The Buddha's warehouse well trip on a Saturday why. morning. <laughs> ah, no. Like my dad provided the house, the education... Like just the, the, the basics, I think. I'm still getting it, guys. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. Because I just feel what, what's happened and you come... Like if it's not there, some men can't handle not doing it. It's, it's, it's what... Mm -hmm. you know, like I can... I'm here. I'm providing. Because I'm very strong. I'm like... <laughs> she like, got bold. What, she got bold. So I also have to understand, I'm always going to be myself, I'm not going to change, but maybe I, I am just tired of doing everything. So I that's what I have not dated because I'm figuring out, like, what do I want, how do I want, and I'm very vocal about it. I, I'm an empath, so yes. I always want to fix you. And, no, you know what, maybe it's my turn. Let's sort of bless the role of and, 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 taking care of. And, and, and that's a journey. And, and, and it's okay. And I mean, I don't have any kids. I'm going, I'm not against having kids. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go through the facility process. I'm like, I spend so much money insuring cars and jewelry. Damn, I need to insure my eggs. You do you know what I mean? So I never even thought of it that way. Yeah. You can insure eggs? Well, you kind of feed your eggs. Yeah. Okay, all right. So okay. the whole thing you get, so the yes, yes. thing as women is your eggs. So your yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, yes, yes. Can I tell you that my next business will be actual fertility education to women. Really? I never knew until I was in my 30s that you're born with a certain amount of eggs. That's all you have. So if you're born with three million eggs, that's all you have. Some of babies. Do you know that? No. Do you know that? No. No. <laughs> and that's why fertility is such a big issue because you're waiting longer to have kids. Oh Your eggs my deteriorate. Goodness. Some people lose faster, some yes. don't. So nobody's educating 21 year olds and 20 like maybe you should feed your eggs at 25, years yeah. if you're mm. really going to be in a career. And that is such an important conversation to have, Candice. I know of a number of friends that I can count on both hands who yeah. are actually in their 30s, my yeah. age, going through challenges of actually trying to conceive See. and finding that either their fallopian tubes are blocked or there's some other complications. Sure. But you can't go home and explain that to your in-laws because yeah. it's like, oh, well, you have a problem. But there's you don't understand the you. extent yeah. of what the issue so, is. So and it's that kind me, of education like, that matters. Call it, like, so you know this something called pink tax, yeah? So yes. pink tax is like female roll-ons are more expensive. So even mm. tampons, tampons, kids, tampons. Food, tampons, it's more expensive than males. So I also feel at the moment education is not there for female fertility. Mm. So that's a whole other conversation I'd I love to have. Is we need doctors and, and we cannot feel Miss guilty. Thurston. <laughs> Yes, uh, <laughs> the next uh, fertility right? entrepreneur. Mm. Mm. And I probably promise you, it's just by education. And God's amazing and he developed us great. But the one thing he maybe didn't get right is like, when we ready to have kids? Like, I know at like 40, 40, so maybe I'd be ready because I'm at a stage for it. If I don't, I'm also quite comfortable with it. But at 20, 21, some people are amazing mm. and some are not. So, there's this clock where women are like, look, I need to have a kid. And then you're bringing in kids which you don't have the, you know, it's just, you bring the structure, the structure, yeah. structure exactly. in. And listen, I'm not the expert, I don't want to be the expert. I just want to be able to have women feel like they're not forced to have kids in the age they're not really to. And it's expensive, so how do you work with medical aid like discovery to make this process cheaper? Yes. Mm. You know, so, so it's a whole thing. And yes, there's a family thing, but it's education.
I, uh, no, I, you're, you're right. I, 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 if there's one thing that I can, I'll give advice to you. For, you, you, I think in your twenties you're young. Right? Yeah. You don't even know your. You <laughs> like, you like. I mean, I, I got married young, so. Yeah. I can um, talk about the marriage part. The, yeah. the parenting part, I'm still not sure about. I'm, no, I'm still loving being uh, the cool aunt. Me too. Right? I promise. The so there, there's, there's, there's a, there's like a, a I, I'll, I'll speak from a man's perspective. There's a, a level of feeling robbed of, 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 you still want to hit the club Between, and you want to yeah. do stuff. And Guys want to hit the club in their 40s. <laughs> but anyway. I think with you, we could be here for like, Oh yeah. For 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 a while, um, but I, I really just want to say thank you for um, taking on an industry that uh, sort of needed to be formalized in a certain way. Um, you you having conversations um, around here that uh, I think needed to get had, mm -hmm. and 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 I think it was an honor for us for you to open up about your personal life. Mm. I know you're a private person uh, on the family table, mm -hmm. and uh, it was great having you here and. Uh, I think as a parting shot is is what are the two things you would tell uh, and female entrepreneurs yes not entrepreneurs like female entrepreneurs even if it's three four just in terms of advice um to them mm. what would you say that's a tough one <laughs> i think the first thing i would say is just you know if you're going into it understand that you have to be extremely passionate about the industry because entrepreneurship is not easy and entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Mm. So often people that are in corporate think that entrepreneurship is the solution to them not having a good corporate experience, but mm. it actually isn't. So you have to be extremely passionate and I think possibly knowledgeable about the space that you're going into because during those, and I always say this, during those times of no money, hardships, your passion is going to, going to get you through. True. And I think secondly, um, like never be ashamed of your femininity. Mm -hmm. Be beautiful, look beautiful, put a face nice. on. Right. You're gonna flip and be sexy on the beach, do it. Because you know what? That doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. And if the individual that's looking at you is putting you in a certain corner, that's up to you. Do you know what I mean? So love your truth, love who you are. You know, my friend does pole dancing as an extramural activity which is one of the she does it and that makes her feel good so do wow. you you know exactly so i think it's, it's it's just love your truth and don't feel you need to be a boy or be masculine or be the only woman at the top mm. so, so that would be my second one and i'm going to give it third is it is about picking other women up yeah you yeah know? yeah um, we have to give you that and uh, that would be my three sorry on That's fine. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Thanks, thanks, my dear, thanks for coming. For thanks for the honor. Onwards and upwards. Here's to that fertility clinic. <laughs>